his hat offensively? Sorry. Did he raise it offensively? Was it accompanied by gestures? Gestures? I beg of you, Phoebe, do not force me to be more explicit. need to snatch. Try this for size. <laughs> Reveal yourself. Come on. Let's see you. Don't snatch it. My God! <laughs> Here, Simba. Good dog. Drop the stick. Drop the stick. Drop. Drop the stick, Harry Bruce. <laughs> nice Simba. Good dog. <laughs> Who's a jolly chap then? Is a mouse. What else do you get behind your skirting board? Can there be a woodworm that size? A kind of master race? Beavering away in there? Preparing to invade Poland? Sometimes I think my mother was a Nazi. Long before the Fuhrer. Could she have influenced him, I wonder? Uh, he always claimed it was Mussolini. Still, he'd hardly. Admit his guru was a Mrs. Jessica Mann of the Laurels, Worthington Avenue. Are you wearing your long vests, Henry? Yes, Mother. I hope you're not filling the house with too many strange creatures. Pay attention, Henry, when your mother's haunting you. <laughs> Get in. You certainly came in this time. I'll vouch for that. Damn dog at my heels. I've been knocking there for ages. What were you dreaming about? What size a woodworm? Ah. I'm not all fay with all the land-based squigglies. Any foreign body in your water and I'm your man. Mm. It's a constant battle, you know, to keep all kinds of squelchy things from crawling up your tap. Oh, my goodness, yes. Were it not for the thin blue line of the water board, there'd be God knows what clumping about in your porridge. I like the little furry ones. You're piling it on a bit. Do you jog? The occasional memory. <laughs> you ought to come out with me in the mornings. Bring a key, maybe we'll get back in. Where are you going? To roast this lot. Hello? Anybody alive in there? Let's have you then. Come along, we're under new management. I want to hear some movement in there. I can't hear you. Who lives in here? Uh, I forget. That's very offhand. I shall know them as soon as I see them. <laughs> Did you count them? No, I didn't count them. Damn, that was a great chance to count them. I made it four. Go on, barge straight in. Do a body count. 
A white man alone in there? I think not. <laughs> no, no. I'll check them out later. It's only prudent. And besides, it would never do to interfere with their religious practices. They're probably burning things. Do they burn things? The chips were overdone. <laughs> Incense and things, joysticks. Do they ring little bells? I think one of them has a bicycle. There you are. Just a minute, just a minute. Where are you going with that? Few people, Irvin says, appreciate the full extent of a bodyguard's duties. It's popularly thought of as being largely a question of plonking one on some herbert. Whereas, in reality, it ranges widely, from head banging to laying out your dinky little breakfast tray. It's time he was up. What time does he rise? When he's taken an overdose, he likes to lie in for a bit. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hear what? For well, someone who's always making notes about things, you're not very observant, are you? I'm more the speculative type. Myself now, I'm extremely observant. Ordway's eye, they used to call it. Nothing escapes Ordway's eye. I remember the late Duke of Gillingham. This would be the present Duke's father. The old man was having trouble with his public facilities. I think it was his binary return. <laughs> Anyway, he'd been watching me one morning doing imaginative things with the Duchess, his primary system. <laughs> when he said to me, you there. And this was a man who didn't speak to many people. <laughs> said damn occasionally when he missed a pheasant. Now he hadn't known me more than two minutes and there he was calling me you there. <laughs> See, it seems that I have this capacity for striking up relationships with the aristocracy. <laughs> Where was I? Being observant. That's it. Very good. You're improving already. Well, anyway, the old Duke had spotted it. He knew I was observant. Oh, my goodness, yes. No flies in his grace. Except the odd half dozen in his hat. <laughs> now, don't worry. He knew all right. Which brings me to the crux of my little story. Not before time. <laughs> How did I know he knew? You're bursting to ask me. Well, perhaps bursting is a little strong. I'm keeping you in suspense. Such are the skills of the born raconteur. How did I know the old Duke knew I was observant? Huh? You'll find this fascinating. You're observant, he said to me. His very words to me. A man of, let's face it, relatively obscure social origin. Fascinating. It was one of those timeless moments one remembers. We just stood there, alone in a cold urinal. <laughs> this was long before the height of the visiting season. Credible. But true. Oh, my life has been full of incident. That's one I like to think about. Sometimes in the long marches of the night, my sciatica keeps me awake occasionally. You must persuade me someday to tell you about my sciatica. Oh, it's a long story. I had a feeling it might be. You'll be absorbed. I must have told it a hundred times round waterboard fires, and still they used to clamour for more. The sciatica, Mr Ordway. Tell us about the sciatica. <laughs> Sometimes I used to think they'd rather hear about my sciatica than wade waist deep in icy water. <laughs> and they, in this room we find Miss... Uh... Delight. Good Lord. Dolly Delight. Uh, I think it's a stage name. Stage name? Is she an actress? She has beautiful fingernails. But did she have any references? I like the way she smells. A selection technique we appear to have overlooked at the waterboard. My mother used to do all that. She was very efficient. Unbearable, but efficient. Women are usually too emotional. No, she wasn't too emotional. She used to reuse Christmas cards. I thought everyone reused Christmas cards. <laughs> Just a minute, just a minute. Do you clean his shoes? Irving says, would I want to be the bodyguard of any little scruff while has crap all over his shoes? <laughs> a bodyguard, Irving says, should take a pride in the body he's employed to guard. But is he out of bed? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's out of bed. 
That is, I seem to recall he was standing in front of the wardrobe mirror wearing a lady's blouse. A lady's blouse? Highly underestimated, Irving says, is your lady's blouse. Mm. It's amazing what you can get out of a lady's blouse. <laughs> Lurking out in the hallway, are we? Waiting to waylay the first passing dwarf? You're not a dwarf, man. Why does he keep insisting he's a dwarf? Look at the length of me dressing gown. <laughs> no legs. You see any legs? Well, that's practically a definition of be a dwarf. Morning, Irving. Morning, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Whose dressing gown is that? Oh, that's your game, is it? Wants the robe off me back. Let the dwarfs go naked. <laughs> that's the scope of your ambition, is it? Place full of nude midgets. <laughs> Where will they keep their little wallets? Hmm? Tell me that. I merely asked you a simple question. How would you like to go through life with nowhere to keep your business cards, hmm? Can't he find his own dressing gown? I have a waterboard dressing gown of the finest material. Oh, yeah. Stole it from some small person, didn't we? How did you ever manage to find him for a tenant? Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> She has a man in her room. Will you pay attention to me, Henry? Mr. Knight has a man in her room. That's all right. It's not all right. She often has men in her room. Have you any idea why? Of course I know why. She gives acting lessons. <laughs> At this time of day? He must have been here all night. They say it's a grueling profession. <laughs> Really, hey, Miss James, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Here you are accusing people of lying around in bed and all the time poor old doll's been slaving away over an advanced pupil. <laughs> Mr. Light, I'd like a brief word with you out here. Terribly sorry for any inconvenience. The window. Come with me. What? Come. Ah, you there. for advice on insurance. You told them my name! Did you have to tell the whole world my name? <laughs> Mr. Pillbeam is extremely shy with regard to his acting lessons. Oh. You see how far from reality sometimes is the common image of the thrusting young insurance executive. <laughs> it was never like that when his mother was alive. How do we stand? Insurance-wise. Come along, Phoebe. Make <laughs> Mummy proud. I shall catch him when he creeps downstairs. What for? 
unlawful creeping downstairs. It's hardly a felony. He was attempting to leave by an upstairs window. Don't you find that behaviour suspicious? She told you. He's shy. An upstairs window? <laughs> he's taking acting lessons. Maybe they're doing exits this week. Not always entirely razor sharp in your awareness of things around you, are you, Henry? Mm -hmm. No, it's probably best you leave everything to me. Leave yourself free to get on with that stuff. Important to you, is it, this stuff? Henry, when you bury your nose in that stuff, it's like talking to a dead person. I often do. Often do what? Talk to dead people. Oh, purely in imagination, of course. I'm like that. I have a very vivid imagination. I suppose I concentrate rather hard when I'm thinking. I know how it is. I could pour for hours over my guide notes to inspectors in the field. I used to commit whole passages to memory. I could recite the waterboard bylaws. I used to find it a great help in times of stress. Go on, ask me. Ask me. Any waterboard bylaw. Go on, ask me. I'm afraid I'm not very good at asking about waterboard bylaws. <laughs> on account, Irving says, of it being a beautiful morning, and what with the birds singing and the sounds and scents of summer percolating through the breeze, <laughs> he's off back to bed. <laughs> if you see an insurance man, send him down here. Has he not left yet? I wonder what's keeping him up there. Don't worry, I'll pounce on him when he does creep down. You will be gentle with him. He's an insurance man. He's not an endangered species. You see, the fact of the matter is... Henry, you let people take advantage of you. Now, all that is going to stop. I'm taking command here. All you have got to do is get on with your thing. Thing? These are notes for a philosophical inquiry into man's relationship with his environment and all other creatures. However, you may be right. Thing is a much snappier working title. How long have you been working on this piece of work? Oh, let's see now. Uh, what's today? Uh, Saturday? No, no, Tuesday. T Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Well, that's approximately, uh, give or take a few days, um, 20 years. 20 years? I keep getting interrupted. Well, now you can get on with it. Thank you. Perhaps you'll think I'm a visionary if I tell you that I have a feeling my destiny has brought me here. I thought rent-free was the inducement. <laughs> Having only recently laid down the heavy responsibility of passing pure water for this entire catchment area, here I am. <laughs> Free! Could it be that I have been called to steer your life's work to completion? It's more of a hobby, really. Nonsense! You must aim at publication. We'll get you there. I shall be the quiet power behind the scenes. It will be my humble contribution to your genius. I think genius might be going a bit far. Would I, Audway, dedicate my life to anything less? I hope you won't be too disappointed. You're a genius. Look at you, man. You have all the qualifications. You're vague, absent-minded, otherworldly, <laughs> extremely weird. <laughs> Damn it, I know one when I see one. And very well. I accept this sacred duty to guide you through to publication, to protect you from all distraction. And perhaps, at the end, you will include some small dedication to me. Oh, I will, I will. To Hamish James Ordway, without whose strength of character and unceasing efforts, this work might never have seen completion. Yes, I like it. It's only fair. <laughs> I shall be a modest footnote in the history of Western thought. I think a leather binding, don't you? <laughs> we ought to insist on leather. I can see gold lettering for the spines. Incidentally, do you, you do realise that I could handle many of the illustrations. I'm more than competent with the instamatic. <laughs> Mother, what are you doing down there? A dead person can't always be where she'd like to be. I've always said you needed someone to take charge, Henry. I'm sure he'll be good for you. I'm not so sure. He seems to be taking charge of more than I anticipated. Well, we're all rooting for him on the other side. Paul? I've got Mr. Mollison here. Is he, uh... Yes, Mr. Mollison is a dead person, too. Come and say hello. Oh, 
I said not to bother. I could have waited on the other side, but your mother insisted. She's very good at insisting. Mr. Morrison is helping me to locate your father. Not very successfully, I'm afraid. Are you there, Mr. Mann? This is me, Mr. Light. Saying, are you there, Mr. Mann? Doll, you're not a dead person. Heaven forbid. A girl will be hard put to earn a living under such a reputation. I'm sorry, I was miles away. Excuse me for being the one to have to say excuse me, but something's come up which prompts me to solicit your kind attention. on insurance business with the other gentlemen following when... Simba? Yes, he can't stand anybody moving fast. He regards it as a challenge. Why are you following me? Keep still, damn you. It's the wife, isn't it? She's employing you. She's got this absurd fixation that I'm seeing someone else. What is the nature of your relationship with Mr. Light? That's a damn lie. Do I look like one of that sort? Ask anyone. If Mr. J.D. Sprague of 296 Frogmorton Terrace, Ilfracombe... Sprague? I thought your name was... Lies! All lies! <laughs> Dog's got two blokes up a tree. <laughs> well, well, how you are, you are. Please note a tree. Now, your normal size individuals accept as a divine right the advantage of a tree. Us dwarfs are expected to make do with some pithy little bush. Even a flowering shrub. I ask you, where's the drama in a flowering shrub? All in all, it's been a noisy morning. <laughs> Oi! People are trying to keep up here! <laughs> it's him, Ordway, demonstrating the benefits of rising early. The best thing with Simba is to ignore him. You'll soon get bored. <laughs> <laughs> 